Oh, so, uh, the Bulldogs. To me, they're one B in the country. Yeah. Anybody have a sell proposition on Georgia Bulldogs? Any facet of them? No, I, I think I think both units, you know, both sides of the ball, special teams. I I just think they're solid. I think they're really solid. Here's the two yeah, things. Think, Go ahead, Hack. Yeah, I think what separates them is is their defense and. It's Unit not, is vicious. It's, it's not a situation where it's like a defense and then they can't pack a punch offensively like Clemson has proven to not be able to do up until this point. Mm. They they can they can they can score some points. They got some dudes on that side of the ball as well. So I think I think they're arguably the most complete team right now in terms of the ability to play complementary football, take advantage of turnovers and then offensively uh, also light up the scoreboard. Strong argument. I like him. Veteran quarterback. I think they have the single best unit, offense, defense, special teams. Their defense is the best unit in America, and that program is battle-tested. That's a battle-tested program. So um, let's go to Ohio State, where, where he seemed to be all with uh, – the Tide and the Bulldogs, Ohio State, Bryce Petty, are you buying or selling? Or are there some parts of it you want to buy and some parts you want to you want to fleece? It, yeah, I, 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 I'm typically an all or nothing kind of guy. But, you know, because at the end of the day, it's, it comes on wins. You, you can't you can't sit there and split up offense, defense and pick pick what you want. Um, it, Ohio State is tough for me because I just I don't think that their defense is going to last at all. Once they get in the meet. Of of conference schedule, I man. You how many how many times you got to put you know somebody put up um, you know 500 yards of offense on you? If you're if you're you know number three, four, five team in the country, that that can't happen. I mean, Tulsa had them for the you know better part of three and a half quarters, um, really four quarters, um, and and that was off of a loss from from Oregon last week. So I'm I'm selling Ohio State. I think that defense is is you know poor, like really bad. Yeah. Um, you know, I like CJ Stroud. I think he's going to be a good, you know, really good. He's good now. I think he's going to be really good down the road. Um, but I just, I don't think they're going to be able to hang people. They're going to be, you know, 51 50. Hat, can you buy the Buckeyes? I, it's just hard because of their, their, their record, like their, their, what they've done, their, their, their span of work over the past really decade. So, I'm kind of like a hold on the Buckeyes right now. Like I yeah. said, I'm super, high, I'm super high on my Nittany Lions right now in terms of being in the driver's seat in that conference and mm -hmm. specifically in the East. I agree with Bryce. I think historically bad defense and also it's really weird that Ohio State hasn't been able to figure it out from a coaching staff standpoint too in terms of putting these guys in situations to be successful and finding an identity – and letting those kids play fast because you still have athletes. Like it's not like they don't have they don't have the personnel on that side of the ball. They got it. Right. Um, I just think there's some hesitancy and they're not playing with the speed and tempo that they need to play with and the conviction they need to play with on that side of the football. It's so gonna that's be my, that, that's my chink in their armor. That's a that's a maturation deal um, yeah. coming down the line. Usually teams with great programs and great history seem to mature and pull it together. They've already gotten knocked out. They have zero room for error going through the, the yeah. year. They have zero That's room for error. And one loss may not even get you in this year. Let's jump here quick. Clemson, I'm going to start with you, Hack. Against the state of Georgia, that we watched them against the Bulldogs <laughs> early, yeah. and then we watched them today against Georgia Tech. They have three touchdowns. Yeah. They have, I, I'm, no, no. That first game, they lost 10 3. They didn't even score yeah. a touchdown. They yeah. have 17 points against the state of Georgia in eight quarters. Buy, sell, or are you going to give them a hole with a little bit of grace? Oh, no. It's, well, it's just shocking to me. I mean, because of the way that DJ even played last year, like you would expect this offense to be operating at a much higher clip. And um, yeah, I'm selling them. I mean, I love their defense. I think their defense is fantastic, but that's only going to get you so far if you can't if you can't hold up the other side of the bargain. You know yep. what I mean? It's you can't 
you can't, like Bryce said, it's a team game. You can't hang your hat on one side of it. It may get you a win or two here and there in some tight games, but in order to do it consistently, you got to have both sides working together. And they're a sell for me right now. It's it's disappointing and hard for me to say, but they're a sell. Bryce, according to the NFL prognosticators on the draft, top 50 draft prospects next year. And remember, DJ doesn't count because he's still got another year coming. They have seven guys in the top 50. We know who they are. They've been yeah. in the national championship game two of the last three years. We know who they are. Why is there such a struggle for them just to get up and down the field and or close out games? If you didn't watch the Georgia Clemson, I mean the Georgia, I mean the Georgia Tech Clemson game today, Clemson up 14 to 8. They had to fight off a goal line stand by Georgia Tech at home with 15 seconds left to survive. Yeah. They were he, they were feet in their own end zone trying to stave off an Appalachian that would have been an Appalachian State type win in South Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. Bryce big. Petty. Tell us why you buy them, Bryce. Tell us how oh, much that's down. not even good grief, man. I, I, yeah, I can't buy Clemson right now. Look, I, what I wrote down, I know you guys can't see on these notes, but I, identity, who, who are you? You're not Trevor Lawrence anymore. You don't have Goldilocks, you know, Dabo Sweeney. This is what you get paid for. Brent Bittables, this is what you get paid for, right? Mm -hmm. Is the, and, and I, honestly enough, this is what makes Nick Saban in a class of his own yep. and nobody Agreed. talks about it. Nobody, they just expect them to be number one. You realize, and people are seeing that. Ohio State is seeing that. They've lucked out with this, you know, kind of this quarterback regime, you know, that Justin Fields leaves, then CJ Shroud. For you as a program and as a coach, even as a unit, to break it down that far, to be able to put 11 guys on the field that can play together, play as one, execute is tough. You are circled every year. Georgia Tech circled you eight months ago when they found out you were on their schedule. You have to be able to come to play, and no one cares if you're Dr. Pepper or not. And that's no hit on DJ, man. By all means, go get your stuff. But at the end of the day, it's about winning football games, and it's about executing. You you threw for a buck 25. Like, how, how is that? That was his numbers today? A buck 26. 126 yards is what he threw for today against mm -hmm. Georgia Tech. Now, I know that there was, you know, weather delay and all that kind of stuff. And look, all that stuff is – that's life, man. Adjust. You got to be able to adjust. And, and again, who are you? Who is the identity of this offense? Because, you know, uh, Coach Venable is going to have that defense rolling. Who are you as an offense? You got to come to play. Hack, to Bryce's point, they have no more margin for error. They're going to finish the season. They won't have another big – we don't think so. I mean, damn, we didn't think – they're going to be scratching it out with 15 seconds left to get past the rambling wreck. But they win. They went out. They went out. There are going to be four or five undefeated teams. You have to think standing at the end of the year. They have zero margin for error, and they find themselves in the same hole uh, uh, as Ohio State. Zero room for error. And they'll and both fan bases will make all this noise at the end of the year and they'll need help across the board just to get back into this dance. Yeah, I mean, looking at it right now, like they got South Carolina on November twenty seventh. I mean, they got Wake Forest, Yukon, Louisville working backwards from there, Florida State, Pitt, Syracuse, Boston College, and NC State next week. Like, you don't have a chance to make a, a statement win to be able to rectify the Georgia and, loss and your struggles early on. Like, you don't have a chance to do that. Like, you're going to have to go out and blow these guys out and then win in the ACC championship in a convincing manner, whether that be against North who? Carolina. Right. Yeah, well, yeah, but that's my point, though. But against, my point a game, is, is a game Wake Forest program for the first time, fellas, we got to raise a glass. Right. <laughs> Florida State. Probably for I've, the first sh time since shoot Eisenhower Ever. administration. Since, Ever. And to Ever. toss out Florida State since 76, 1976, you've gone 0-3. That was wow. Bobby Bowden's first year. How crazy is that? I read that stat and I was like, oh, my gosh. Crazy. That's nuts, man. Crazy. The Knowles no. are 0-3. Boy, oh, boy. All right, so let's now, let's now go to – 
the Plains. We talked about the Roman Army, the Bulldogs, the Buckeyes, zero room for air. Clemson, zero room for air. They haven't been beaten yet, but our opinion of them has certainly been beaten up, and I'm talking about the Sooners. We all offseason heard about Spencer Rattler, rightfully so, a talent in his own right. Oklahoma, they got their they got their dance card, their membership, so to speak, to the SEC. This is the year we go in and do X, Y, and Z. They're just barely getting by teams. They're just holding and holding on to these these programs, just trying to survive. A Nebraska program that got beat by Illinois comes to your house, and it takes every man, it takes every trainer, every secretary. Every second of four quarters to get by Nebraska. Bryce, you said it earlier when we were rapping, uh, watching games earlier. You said, who is Oklahoma? Yeah. Well, who are they right now three games into the season? Are they the number three team in the country? First God, no, no. They're, I mean, it, I mean to, to your point, you these are games where you're like twos and threes get in. Right. And, and that's what's crazy about it. Again, there's a lot of stuff that happened over the last, you know, uh, you know, last year with, with COVID and then this year. So guys haven't been playing. It's, it's just been interesting. But it, I mean, your, your tune up games are they're tune up games for a reason. Like you're paying these dudes two million bucks to come in and get their shit kicked in. You know, and and you're you're taking two lane to the fourth quarter, right. winning by five points. Thank God for Western Carolina State, which is right next to I think Helen Keller State, to where you can put seventy six points up and feel good about it. But then Nebraska comes in, um, the kind of amazes. I know they're two and one, but they're not like they're you know outside of Larry the Cable Guy. I don't know anybody on that roster. I do take that. I do take that back. I know that the quarterback is a Martinez guy because that's been like the last fifteen years. But, but like the, the, oh my gosh! I it, and all we heard about was Alex Grinch in this defense. Yeah, they were supposed to have the complete setup this year. They were supposed to have the defense that they've always wanted. Lincoln Riley is Lincoln Riley. Spencer Rattler, um, ever since the Texas game, was you know trending up uh, like. Thing, Apple or Tesla stock. And and now all of a sudden, you know, it's what people are just supposed to lay down and win, but, you know, lose because you're Oklahoma. Um, so I don't know who they are. I don't know who they are, but Big 12 does not care. Um, I, I got to be honest, you know, Hacks talked about, um, you know, the East over there in Big 10. We talked about SEC West. Right now, I'm nervous about what Big 12 is because, you know, it was when, when Trevor and I were talking about it, it was it was Oklahoma, it was Iowa State, and then who? And now right. we're going, man. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's going to be a fight. Yeah. It's going to be a dog it's fight. Yeah. Right, Hack. We talked about this a little earlier when we went down Cincinnati's resume. Cincinnati, and we we rattled off all those teams that they showed up at their B or B minus game. Could they get anybody above them? I changed my mind. They could get Oklahoma with the effort and or urgency they had today against Indiana, I think they could still get Oklahoma only really because of how Oklahoma plays, how they go about yeah. business. Yeah. Is that, is that remotely close or do you think I'm just talking shit? No, I mean, I think, I think that's a fair statement. And at the end of the day, you know, it's, I think it's really hard for us because we've all been there. We've been through the ebbs and flows of a season. We've all been through that struggle of finding identity. We've, we feel that and we can empathize with that a little bit, but at the end of the day, you also have to take all that aside and sit there and be like, you are who you consistently show us you are, right? Correct. Like, Correct. And Oklahoma has consistently showed us that they are not the killer family, you know, family of five type team that everyone expected. And Spencer Rattler has not played like the Heisman front runner that everyone expected. And that defense hasn't played the way that it was expected to come into. So uh, you get a leash, but once you start taking advantage of the fact that you have that leash, that leash okay. starts getting retracted really quick. And to your point, George, they are still undefeated. Like they still do control their destiny. 
they haven't had a, a, a loss. Thankfully, they've been able to kind of get by by the skin of their teeth a couple of weeks here. But it's just I, – I, I think there's too many other good teams right now that are putting on – putting together too good a resumes to sit there and say that they are a top five team in the country right now. They're, they're just not. So I don't so even think this is what's interesting. Team. I know it. I love it. So this is what's interesting, right? Because you have Alabama at a lock mm -hmm. and then you have three teams that are fighting for three spots because you know, Clemson's going to be out if they beat, you know, a, probably a two loss North Carolina team. I don't know what the heck happens in the ACC. I don't know. And then you have the I Big Twelve. I think you 12. can lock Georgia. I think you can lock. Yep. Georgia. That's what, but that's what I'm Georgia's saying. Playing, I, I, think I think so you too. lock Georgia and Alabama, and then it's there's two, two done. Hours. That's done. And then you, two and then hours. what though? So because you have Pac-12, ACC, Big Twelve, and Big Ten. So right. now you've got you've got. Well, do you have you, the Big Twelve though? Really? I don't. I don't. That's what I'm saying. Well, but what, what I'm saying yeah. is, if you say say that Oklahoma continues to just beat people by three points in the last second, right? They, and then you they'll have make a you case have about legacy. They'll make a case about what we've done, who we've been, and then they'll point to the to the loss column having a zero. Forget about the style we got here, regardless. A one loss Buckeyes team, or a one loss Oregon, or an undefeated Oregon, undefeated Oklahoma for that last spot. Oregon gets it. That, that, that's, well, here's the thing. Mm. Oregon, Oregon runs the table and Penn State wins the East. It's over. I, I don't care it's if over. you – I don't. I it's over. It's over. You think that's where it settles, Hack? Penn yeah, State it's over. runs it out. Oregon runs it out because they're on those paths right now. What about an undefeated Notre Dame team? They're going to have plenty of – Notre Dame. And they're going to have they juice. Street, they got Cincinnati, Wisconsin. They got, they got a schedule. Virginia Tech. They have <laughs> yeah. enough real opponents – yeah. To step up, knock out, and, and grow some. But that's not the same as winning a, a, a heavyweight conference like the Big Ten with Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State left. Nor yeah. the Pac-12. I think they're going to give the Pac-12 a little uh, push. Because I, I think college football is dying to see somebody west of the Mississippi. Or yeah, no doubt. No yeah. doubt. Come on yeah. in there.